For our first reading excerpt for today, we're going to take a look at a very short scene from the famous classic novel, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And this scene is going to introduce um, the theme of PTSD and mental crisis or mental trauma in connection to war and the literary technique of using um, the trope or the um, pattern an archetype of mental breakdown as an opportunity for the story to invite and suggest social commentary and social criticism. Uh, we'll also look at uh, the way the narrator uses um, scientific as well as um, nature-based imagery to make his reflections. Um, so let's get started. Our first reading an excerpt from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey comes to us from an anthology or a collection of writing that took place from the Stanford Writing Workshop. So when we cite this text, we're going to cite the author, Ken Kesey. The text that we're quoting from, we'll use from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And then from the book title, we will cite the collection and the editor, as well as, well as the date of this collection. So overall, this short excerpt is setting the tone for this week, where we're exploring the topic of PTSD and mental health crisis and treatment, specifically related to veterans and war. And we're looking at how this topic or this theme extends into a social commentary about um, feeling lost or out of place or helpless in the face of cultural systems like war, social expectations, and as we'll see in our next reading, race and nationality. Our text um, come, starts with a little bit of background about the um, author and the text that we're reading from. And it's important to notice that um, the majority of the works collected in this anthology come specifically from the writing workshop uh, that took place in 1989 when um, people were experimenting with um, trying to find new literary forms following postmodernism. Um, but this text actually is a sample um, showcasing the author who had done his graduate studies in Stanford. Um, so this text was actually um, coming from 1962. Um, they give us a little bit of background information about the author who um, in the 1950s, um, he took place in government funded experiments with uh, psilocybin mushrooms and LSD. And he worked as, I believe he worked as a janitor in the psychiatric ward of a VA hospital in Palo Alto. Uh, so we see that um, historical background of the author reflected in one of the main characters who uh, works in as a janitor. He's a patient and he works at a janitor. The That character, the chief, um, if you guys uh, research the background of this story, he figures really greatly into the story as a whole. Um, but the text here is focusing on the narrator's point of view. So let's jump into the story. Um, we are looking at a little bit of a connection between um, what the narrator experienced on the battlefield and what he experiences during his um, the psychiatric crisis. So he starts off, um, I know how they work it, the fog machine. And he's referring to um, some thing, some illusion that he feels that's happening right now. But he explains and understands that illusion through flashback and memory. So the, um, the text begins, this example begins with a flashback to war. Um, we can notice as he describes and narrates the way fog machines were used. Um, he uses a mixture of scientific and technological imagery as well as nature imagery. Um, he talks about this theme of losing yourself and um, there's a sort of split between the literal fog that takes place during war and then when he returns to the present narration we see how paranoia or um, you know psychosis is kind of a metaphorical or a figurative fog um, and in this fog literal and figurative the conflict is that potential to lose yourself and lose touch with uh, your unique individual identity um, being subsumed into the larger identity um, of being, you know, a soldier in a war. Um, he describes um, the shock therapy room. So touching base with the context of uh, mental health care in the 1950s. Um, and we know the controversies. And in our discussions, we might research to find out more information um, to understand this, this culture of shock therapy more. Um, so we, he uses technology imagery um, to create a horrific tone or a mood of horror the shock shop door. 
Um, and then he uses some snow and winter imagery. Um, he's, you know, trying to cling on to sanity like a man in a blizzard hangs on a fence rail. And we will see um, this link between um, psychosis, sanity, and snowy imagery when we turn to our next sample for the week. Um, but I'm reminded of the snow imagery that we've seen in our texts before this. Um, if we remember from the Blythedale romance, there was a late spring snow. If we remember from um, John B. Wyeth, he talks about, he uses the um, analogy trying to reason with a snowstorm, like trying to talk a young man out of his um, impulsive sort of whims. And then of course we'll remember snow imagery from the Virginia Reed Murphy text, uh, as well as in the, um, the Plymouth um, settlers. So we see this snow imagery that connects us back to many of the sources that we've read before. Um, we have a, a kind of contrasting theme, being lost versus finding yourself or being found or being seen. Um, and then there is a scenario or a scene in the plot where they have a therapeutic meeting. And during this meeting, the narrator has a mental episode where he really uh, begins to lose his mind um, to an extent that, that, hadn't, that he hadn't experienced before. Um, he tells us that he's used to trying to ignore things, but all of a sudden he sees things clearly, way too clearly. Um, there is a character who makes some commentary, you know, describing or defining what is America. And this connects us back to our, our previous topic, which was exploring the American dream. Um, he goes, you know, this is America, this is Mexico, this is Canada. Um, in these insane kind of chants that lead the narrator to clarity and insight. Um, we repeat the theme of, of being found versus being lost, being crazy versus making sense. Um, and then we talk about um, this other character who he struggles to keep up in the world and it appears as though he might have some type of um, learning disability um, or something. And, and the narrator feels an intense sense of empathy, um, empathy with this, this man and his struggles, empathy with the previous, I think he was a colonel or corporal, um, the guy who's talking about America, Canada, Mexico. Um, just sort of this empathy with how much modern society and modern culture um, can cause a deep sense of pain and loss for all of these characters and even himself. Um, and he, he leaves us saying he feels this sense of helplessness and this need to be um, defensive against the medical sort of institutions um, that are symbolized and contained within the nurse figure, which refers to sort of standard medical treatment, shock therapy, talk therapy, um, hospitalization. Um, and there's this kind of commentary that these institutions and mechanisms, which are supposed to help you, end up making you feel even worse. Now, as you read this through on your own, um, pay attention to the way that the author invites or suggests social commentary. So look for ways where you as a reader can infer um, what might be wrong with this uh, world, what might be wrong with our culture and our society beyond just the obvious surface level issues of uh, war, what underlying issues might be um, kind of insane or crazy, leading these characters to really suffer.